Hello students, welcome to the channel. Scatterplot questions on SAT math are of two kinds. One is scatterplots where you're expected to find the equation of the curve as shown in the scatterplot. These are generally under the algebra set, which is what we are going to look at today. Another kind of questions is to read a scatterplot and get data from the scatterplot to arrive at a finding. Those are arithmetic questions on scatter plots, which we'll look in a future video. So here we'll start with scatter plot algebra question one. After a person takes medicine, the amount of drug left in the person's body decreases over time. The scatter plot shows the amount of drug left in the person's bloodstream after they are given an initial dose of 1000 milligrams. So you can see that the first data point is at 1000 milligrams and then the curve shows a decline as the time passes. If Y is the amount of drug left in the bloodstream since the initial and X is the number of hours since the initial dose, which of the best, which of the following best captures the relationship between X and Y. So if I try and plot this curve, I can see that this would be an exponential curve, right? It's not a linear curve because it's not going like this. So I can straight away eliminate options C and D because they are both linear curves, right? Now in option A, the, ex the base of the exponent is less than one, which indicates a decline. And in option B, the base of the exponent is greater than one, which indicates an increase, right? Because in any exponential function, the base of the exponent decides how the function will look. If it is less than one, then there is a decline. It's an exponential decay function. Uh, so this is called exponential uh, decay. And if the base of the exponent is greater than one, then it's an exponential growth function. Y value increases as X increases. So here I can clearly see that this is an exponential decline. And so my answer is option A. So you see, I didn't even have to kind of find the equation. I could simply look at the options and using the process of elimination come to the answer. Now let's say there was uh, one of the options was uh, y is equal to 1000 into 0 0.72 to the power x. Right, which meant that let's say there were two options with the base of the exponent less than one. Then I would have to use a point from the graph to get the answer. So let's say I pick up, uh, so in steps of five uh, hours, right? Yeah, so then it seems to be in steps of five because this looks like five, this looks like 10, this looks like 15. So let's say I go with five, five here, then this value will be 400, 500. So I can take this as, I don't know, 560. An approximation would work here. Um, 45, yeah, 560 seems about right. So I need to get 5, 560 on my graph. So if I put x equal to five in this equation, and I plug that into the calculator, then I get one second. So I get 0 0.89 to the power five, 0 0.89 to the power five, and that multiplied by 1000. So that gives me 558, right? So option A here gives me 558, which is very close to what I was looking for, right? Let me put uh, x equal to five here. So I get 0 0.72 to the power five. And that multiplied by 1000 gives me 193.5. So clearly that can't be the right answer. So in this question, I didn't have to do any calculation from the graph because option A was very obvious. But if you have options which are 
which could, you know, there could be options where uh, you might have to do some calculation as we saw. So then even then you can get to the right answer pretty quickly. Okay, question two, the graph shows the price in dollars of a gallon of unleaded gasoline at randomly selected stations located at various distances from the town center. The equation of the line of best fit is y is equal to point double triple zero two five x plus one point five three two five. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the slope of the line of best fit? Okay, so the y-axis is the cost of gasoline and the x-axis is the distance from the town center, right? So I can see that my y-intercept from this equation is 1.5325. 1 so this point would be 0, 1.5325. And the line has a slope of 0 0.0025. This is the slope of the line. So what is the best interpretation of the slope? In any line, the slope is given as delta y over delta x, which means the change in the y value for a unit change in the x value. What is the unit change in the x value? It would be one mile right? One mile. So the best interpretation of the slope would be the change in the cost of gasoline in dollars for a one mile increase from the center of the town. So if I go one mile extra from the town center, the cost of gasoline would increase by 0. 0.0025 dollars. And that option is B. For every one mile increase in the distance from the town center, the cost of gasoline increases by now 0 .000, 0 0.0025 dollars. One second. 0 0.0025 dollars is the same as 0 0.025 cents. Right? Because when you multiply this by 100, you get 0 0.025 cents. So that is what option B is saying. Option A, for every 10 mile increase in the distance from the town center, the cost of gasoline, that can't be correct because the slope is defined as change in Y for unit, for one, the, the change in X by one unit, unit change. So it can't be A. For every two cent increase, the distance from the town center increases. So this is clearly wrong because it frames it in the wrong units and even D frames it in the wrong units. So the best answer is option B. Okay, question three, the same question, but this time we have been asked to interpret the Y intercept of the line of best fit. So we know from the equation of the line that is given to us that the y-intercept is 1.5325, right? What does this mean? That if you do not go anywhere from the town center, that is you stay at the town center, the cost of gasoline would be $1.53, um, $1.53, right? Uh, whatever, per liter, per something, that's not, uh, it's not given, right? Of a gallon, of per gallon, okay. So the best interpretation is the cost of gasoline per gallon at the town center is $1.53. So that is uh, option C right? One must travel 1.53 miles. That is absolutely not correct because 1.53 is the cost. So this misrepresents the unit. The average price of gasoline within 10 miles, the, 
the scatter plot cannot tell you the average price. It can only tell you the price at particular points. So B is out. One can get a lower price per gas of gasoline if one travels to another town. So this is just beyond the scope of the question. This has no relevance. So C is the best answer. Okay. The scatter plot shows the number of calories Lexi burns per minute when she does her stretching exercises. The equation for the line of best fit is y is equal to 1.5x minus 20. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the x-intercept of the line? Okay, so here we have been asked to find the x-intercept of the line. So let's say my line looks something like this. Uh, this point is 0 comma negative 20 because the y-intercept is negative 20. So let's first find the x-intercept. x-intercept would be when y is 0. So 0 is equal to 1.5x minus 20. So 1.5x is 20. So x is 20 by 1.5 which is uh, 200 by 15, 15 ones are 15, 15 threes are 45, um, yeah, 0.33. So this point, the x-intercept would be 13.33 comma zero. Now, what does this mean? This means that Lexi starts exercising and then until 13.33 minutes, she hasn't burned any calories, right? Because that's like the warmer phase of the exercise. And only after that, only after 13.33 minutes does she start burning calories. So for example, at 20 minutes, she has burned 10 calories. At 30 minutes, she has burned about 24 calories and so on. So the best interpretation of this would be that Lexi will not burn any calories until 13.33 minutes into her exercise, which is what option A is saying. Lexi does not burn any calories until 13, one third minutes into her exercise. Lexi burns 13.13 calories for every minute of her exercise. This is the interpretation of the slope, right? Which is 1.5. So it can't be this. It would be that for every minute of her exercise, Lexi burns 1.5 calories. So B is wrong. When Lexi begins her exercise, she has already burned 13 one third calories. That makes no sense. So this is out. It takes 13 one third minutes for Lexi to burn a tenth of all calories she burns during a session. That's again irrelevant because we don't know how many calories she'll burn during a session. That would depend on how many minutes she exercises. So the right answer is option A. So this was, as I said, a practice for the algebraic portion of scatter plots where you are asked to interpret or understand or form equations. Uh, in another video, we we'll look at scatter plots that are asked on the arithmetic side, problem solving data analysis. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.